Storylines that you're not supposed to think about too hard, wrestling rings that buckle under the pressure, and main events that never matter. Now that's what I call wrestling. Hey there, sports fans. My name is Kit Parsons, better known as professional wrestler Magnum CK, and this is Now That's What I Call Wrestling, the good, bad wrestling show. We are continuing our journey. If you're new to us this week, we uh, we have been embarking on a hero's journey of our own through several different types of wrestling at this point, but most specifically, the most famous wrestling to ever come out of Tulsa, Oklahoma's Brady Street Studios. That is 1995's own World Wrestling Empire. We are going through the entire available catalog, and we are up to episode eight. That's right, episode eight. If we're on eight episodes of this, that means that I've watched probably a 1,000 hours of this, and my mental health relationships and personal belief in anything regarding hope is suffering and tattered and fading away. If this is your first time joining us, don't worry. I'll do my best to catch you up as we go along, but you can also just go back and watch the other videos. I mean, if you sat down, if you had the time to sit down and watch this, you could go back and watch the other one. I mean, why, why hop in in the middle? Either way, happy to have you here. Why should we waste any more time? It has been two weeks since we've dived into the WWE, and it is time to react to the act. Shut. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a reaction to the action of the World Wrestling Empire! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Devlin Dome. Oh, this is the ledge with Devlin Blanchard. We've got a great night tonight. The big news is that the board will allow Flamin' Raymond to wrestle Shane Cortez in defense of Renegade's title. Man, I can't wait to see that. This is going to be great. I have serious, serious fears for the physical well-being of Flamin' Raymond. Uh, same. <laughs> I mean, I would say that every episode of this that we get into, I have serious, serious fears for the physical well-being of everyone involved. But we've seen Flavin Raymond, and he looks like, like, have you ever been walking down a sidewalk in maybe a town you've never been on, and there's like a weird step down in the sidewalk that isn't really clearly marked, and you don't really know, and you kind of take that step where you think that the step is higher up than it is, like it's it's level, so you take the step, but it's just like, it's just like, an, it's like barely, it's like two inches or an inch and a half lower than you think, but it's like jarring to your whole body, and your brain is like, oh my God, and your back is like, okay, that was weird. I feel like if Flamin' Raymond did that, it could kill him. Of course, in the other big news, the Outlaws will defend... Once again, just the best kind of television to just show things completely out of context with no, no reference to what happened, to just have things happen off camera and then never address them but continue them on camera. It's really just wonderful storytelling. All that I can figure is that Devlin Blanchard took someone's uh, sign away in the crowd because he does the old school wrestling thing of like, don't you dare start chanting the I suck. There will be no more signs and there will be no more chance of princess in this building. Listen, not judging it, I love it. I did that probably two weeks ago at a show. It's my favorite thing, but it doesn't make a lot of sense in this context. My favorite part about Prince Devlin Blanchard is the closer you get to him, the more you realize that he's just like wearing stuff that you would use to like do yard work. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's wearing like old ratty jeans. He's got he's got the party city hat. He's got the he's got the purple tarp cut off into a cape. But he's got the the ripped jeans and then like the grass stained grass stained sneakers. It's wonderful. Prince of what? He's the prince of what? Devlin Blanchard looks like he's the prince of a local mattress store. Devlin Blanchard looks like he's the prince of low low prices. <laughs> Devlin Blanchard looks like he's the prince of fighting with people at the Salvation Army over cheap coffee mugs. Then we've got Annihilator coming up against Michael The Rock Johnson, a big rivalry there. Can't wait to see all this happening right here tonight on the World Wrestling Empire. Empire, now buy some from these people right here. They're good folks, and we want, to, we want you to give them their money. 
They're putting this on TV right now. And don't hate me because I'm beautiful. We we're starting off we're starting off with lots of problems here. Take two, guys. Like it, it didn't work out the first time. <laughs> like it's okay. I do it all the time. I could probably show you a montage of things I've messed up. Like I do it all the time. I've been recording for eleven minutes. I I could probably put together a montage of things I've messed up. I think in the history of professional wieners. Uh, yeah. Well, there was some storyline last week where Shane Cortez had to go to the board of erections. Directors. I think if I had to share what my favorite part of the World Wrestling Empire is, it's penis. I just stopped and did it again because it's not alive. I can do whatever I want. Hey, and then be back with a word from the Texas Outlaws. There, there is a surefire way to get me to not come back. There's still a sticker on my shirt. Bloopers. <laughs> There is a surefire way to get me to not stay tuned through the commercial break, and that is to tell me that the Texas Outlaws are on the other side of it. <laughs> it's like, that'd be like if you were in college and you were like, you know, like, look, I know you don't really want to take this class, all right? But if you take this class and you sit through it and you make it and you don't leave and, and, you, and you pass, at the other end of it, we're going to beat you about the face and neck with stockings full of oranges. That's that's as clear of a comparison as I can make as to what it's like knowing that the Texas Outlaws are on the other side of a commercial break. <laughs> that's like putting me in prison and then taking me to the exit door and saying, all right, you've done your sentence. Now all you have to do is open this door and walk out and you're free. But I have to also tell you on the other side of this door, everyone you know and love is dead. <laughs> That's the the most accurate way I can describe how it feels. Truth hurts. So does this promo. Is is the feud between you and Tennessee Rebel going to affect your performance in this match? How can it affect? I done took the punk down, beat the snot out of him. He almost said shit. I uh, he almost said shit. He was this close. Mm. That wouldn't make this acceptable, but it would have made it just a little sting a little less if I could hear a bad word. And we're going to do the same thing tonight when we get in that tag team. I don't know why they refuse to just lay down and say one, two, three. Is that how you lose wrestling matches? Like, I feel like I've had, I don't know, probably like a thousand matches at this point in my life. I feel like I wish someone would have told me that the nights that I was supposed to lose a match, that it was like common practice to lay down at the end and go, one, two, three. No one ever told me that. It's true what they say. You learn something new every day and you learn something new and, and, and everything's bigger in Texas and in Texas, no one can hear you scream. You need to plan to collect that bounty on Scott Summers. I'll tell you how I'm going to collect that bounty on Mr. Summers. Mr. Summers is not a wrestler. Mr. Summers is not a fighter. And worst of all, Mr. Summers is not from Texas. And I don't even think he's a true Southerner. And when we get in the ring, Mr. Summers, I'm going to hurt you, son. You just got nothing, buddy. <laughs> just don't even do another take. Just, just cut it out. Just edit it out. Go back. Hey, Davcom, if you're in the edit suite. And this is the edit suite where we put it all together. Go back, start this promo over, and if you can, just do like a weird skip where we just skip over the part where regular Dan was going to talk. Is the feud between you and Tennessee Rebel going to affect your performance in this match? I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to break your will. I'm going to break your spirit. He's going to break your spirit? The first one already broken. He's already using the spirit. Because why do you think they call me Bone Crusher Bubba? They don't call you Bone Crusher Bubba. They call you Dirty Dan. Because that's what I thought your name was the first episode we did of this. And so that's what it is now forever. Because I have the power in this relationship, Texas Outlaws. You don't have power over me anymore. I've taken my life back. That money is mine. Woo! All right, there you have it. I think the worst part of that promo, aside from that it happened, was that they both seemed very proud of it. Tag Team Champions, Texas Owls. Texas Owls. The Texas Owls? I would watch the Texas Owls. 
Give me the Texas Owls and I will tune in. You go to you're about you're about to throw to a commercial and you say on the other side of this break we've got the Texas Owls. <laughs> Put some super glue on that couch, baby. Put on a pot of coffee. I got to see this. Okay, welcome back to the Empire. The Devlin Blanchard doing his algebra homework as we come back from break. From Los Angeles, California, Annihilator! Big E, Annihilator of Jerry Silverado looks like he'd like to share with you the good news. Um, <laughs> Jerry Silverado looks like he's the wacky guest star lawyer on night court jerry silverado can get you a great deal on encyclopedia britannica a through l you're gonna have to pay full price for the rest standing six foot tall weighing in at 240 pounds from tulsa oklahoma michael the rock johnson oh i'm sorry we've had a change in the card they're bringing out TJ Steele to take on Annihilator. He's six foot tall, 240 pounds. Whoa, a lot to unpack here. First of all, great recovery, bud. <laughs> uh, sorry, they changed it. Uh, and also the same height and weight as the other guy I said by accident. But it is time for us to conduct an investigation. Because I have a theory that Devlin Blanchard knew that ledge was going to drown out there and he didn't throw a rope because if we rewind just a little bit earlier we see that when the ledge was saying the incorrect match devlin blanchard was nodding along and it's going to be a great night of course then we've got annihilator coming up against michael the rock johnson a big rivalry there can't wait to see all this happening right here tonight on the and then as soon as ledge got up to announce the matches devlin blanchard clearly knew what match he was he talked about it he said it was tj Steele. and the former and grandma i stress the word former champion tj Steele. what's going on devlin blanchard you want to tell us where you were on the night that this was filmed yeah i hope you have an alibi pal because there was a murder in that ring just now a murder of ledge's well cultivated earned credibility and i don't know a lot about oklahoma justice but i can guarantee you this without even googling it it's a death penalty state brother should have thought about that annihilator is going to be ready for the big guy of course he is you see you are ill informed my friend while you were up there wondering this is also this is the first time i've seen jerry silverado without his hat and i would like to apologize for ever criticizing him for wearing his hat because the only thing worse than silverado in his hat is silverado without his hat and it's not even that like oh he's freakish or whatever but like it's just weird and i don't like it silverado with his hat off looks like he's about to give you a a quote that's too high on some used tires Jerry Silverado without his hat looks like you can call him Al. Jerry Silverado without his hat looks like he has had a very wonderful long career with Penn Gillette. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Silverado stands helpless at ringside. This place is blowing up. They're taking the roof off the Devlin Dome right here. Oh, Annihilator seems to have been slightly injured. He's taking his time about tying up with probably the most physically developed man in the empire dj still the most physically developed man in the empire is code for the only man in the empire with a gym membership <laughs> uh dj Steele, well known as the only member of the roster with a three-month membership to the local ymca so congratulations indicated to me that the title change that happened was a result of some illness in his family he had to leave the building that night and he was very very all right it's time for everybody's favorite game what move will he do now we've watched a lot of annihilator matches we've watched a lot of tj steel matches this is the game where i pause the video and you at home get to guess what move will annihilator give to tj steel and as usual it's multiple choice come on Come on, we're fair around here. We want to give you a fighting chance. What move will he do? A, a clothesline. B, TJ Steele ducks a clothesline. C, double clothesline. D, a clothesline. All right, lock in your votes now as we get ready to reveal 
What move will he do? Very adamant about the fact that he would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was there any question? So there's lots of test taking strategies out there. And for what move will he do? You know, you've heard the the old the old axiom of like, you've heard the old saying of see your way out. Like if you don't know the answer, answer C. For what move will he do? Clothesline your way out. If you don't know the answer, clothesline your way out. And that probably applies to things like the ACT also. If you're ever, if you're ever taken the ACT, hey, uh, uh, impressionable youths, if you're ever taking the ACT and you're really just bombing it, you're getting sweaty and you're looking around and the walls feel like they're closing in, you're running out of time and your whole future and college and life and, 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 and future income depend on it, just get up and start throwing lines, baby. Clothesline your way out of that room. Clothesline your way out of that room and go get a nice hamburger sandwich his climb up that ladder on his way back to the world. I think the most surprising part so far about Annihilator's offense is that he's working the correct leg. Later wins tonight. That moves him up one more notch on that ladder. Oh, now Annihilator's outside the ring. To that little mistake by Annihilator. Annihilator just waited too long. The amount is offensive. Here's TJ with the Irish whip. It's time once again to play What Move Will He Do? Now, we have a real curveball here. We can pretty safely assume what move someone the likes of Annihilator is going to do. But TJ Steele is a real professional. So this is a harder round, gang. All right. So I'm gonna I'm sorry. The last one was your warm-up. And this one, I don't know if you're gonna be able to close on your way out of this one. That's a good life lesson. My grandmother always told me she had it crocheted into a pillow. You can't always clothesline your way out of every situation. Never made sense till today. Now I get it, Mima. Thank you. So TJ Steele is whipping Annihilator off the ropes, but what move will he do? Is it A, a shoulder tackle, B, a hip toss, C, a back body drop, or D, clothesline? Now let's find out what move will he do? Up into the ropes. Big back drop. Absolutely. I'm talking about TJ Steele, brother. He's a pro. Of course he did a back body drop, and of course Annihilator sold it like a sack of potatoes. Of course, of course he did a back body drop, and of course Annihilator flew about as well as a wet sack of doorknobs. TJ Steele obviously trying to buy some time to recover from... I do love... <laughs> One thing I love about Annihilator is every once in a while he will sell a punch or a headbutt as if his entire face and life have been ruined. <laughs> like, like he gets punched in the face and reacts like Clayface on Batman the Animated Series when he, when he took too much of that <laughs> makeup and ruined his whole life. his own as he comes to his feet and goes after Annihilator. Steel is gonna have to watch his moves real. Okay, this is unprecedented, gang. Third round. Third round of what move will he do? Again, wild card. We've got TJ Steele here. So once again, this is gonna be a trickier one. So what move will he do? Is it A, a drop kick? B, a Samoan drop? C, a belly to belly suplex? Or D, a personal and professional calamity. Lock it in because it's time to find out what move will he do? Quick, real close. Oh, TJ still oh throws the Annihilator into the ropes and the ring breaks. Dangerous. That ring, that wasn't just a broken rope. We, we have been talking about it. We've been talking about the state of this ring for weeks now. Something is wrong with it. That middle rope is super loosey-goosey. It's, it's, it doesn't look like it's very sturdy. It sounds to me like the cross support cables on the bottom Close. broke and came loose. They should get out of this ring immediately. Like they're in... It's a bit of a dangerous situation. Now the frame is still, the frame that connects the post is still holding up the ring, but it, it would not be outside of the realm of possibility of one of those posts slipping out of the frame and the whole thing just coming down and possibly a ring post falling in and hitting someone outside in the crowd as well. That's entirely possible. Annihilator is lucky. We've, no, we've noted that he runs the ropes like an idiot. He doesn't grab the rope. He runs the ropes like like he's he's trying to squeeze sideways and get through a, a crowded antique shop. He's lucky he didn't fall out of the ring and break his neck. If the top rope had snapped loose, he probably would have been paralyzed. Which, which all kidding aside, is a disaster. This is why you should not be wrestling. Roll your eyes if you want. You should not be wrestling unless you've been trained appropriately. And some of these guys just haven't been. 
So the fact that we're not watching him carried out on a backboard is a miracle. He's too rough on the rope. Shut up, he Mike. He pulls on the rope. He wrenches on the rope. He thinks it's his. Shut up, Mike. It's just you, you yanked on the rope so I said, hard. shut up, Mike. Also, how funny that it basically like his butt broke the ropes. If there's a silver lining to this near calamity, it's that Annihilator's big butt broke the rope. The ropes completely. The, lean, the ring posts are leaning in. Unbelievable. TJ still working on Annihilator. Bring it to his feet. That was a real suplex from our man TJ Steele. TJ Steele's the real deal. The real deal, TJ Steele. Annihilator did not want to go for that ride. TJ Steele gave him one opportunity to cooperate and then said, see ya, brother. <laughs> In the meantime, TJ's got a chair. Good. TJ goes after Annihilator with the chair. Referee Doug McCoy orders the bell ring. There's been a disqualification. Jerry Silverado looks like if he could just get his hands on two or three of the Glen Gary leads, he'd be hot again. He'd be back on his streak. You got a bounty on my head, big man, but it hasn't been collected yet. You want to collect a bounty, you bring yourself on down, and you collect it yourself if you're man enough. You know, last time we wrestled, you did. You power drive my head right into the mat. But I'm still here. I'm still coming at you. And you're going to have to deal with Scott Summers. You're going to have to deal with the Tennessee Rebel and Viper. And you're going down. All right. And the big question in everybody's mind, how will the feud between Dirty Dan Wilder and the Tennessee Rebel affect the strategy for this match? I'll tell you how it's going to affect it. When I get through with Dirty Dan, there ain't going to need to be any tag team match. Can somebody tell Tennessee Rebel where the camera is? <laughs> that's that's terrifying. I believe I believe what he's saying. Even though I know that he doesn't believe what he's saying, I believe it. Because I doubt if he's going to be able to get back in the ring. I'm going to take that boy and I'm going to mop him all the way around the ring. And when I get through, there won't be any Dirty Dan. Well, there you have it. A good match in the World Wrestling Empire. We'll be right back. Remember this, though. The South. I love that they cut off his racist bullshit at the end. Look, I, 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 these three guys look like they are being brought in front of the school board for screaming too much at the boys' basketball team during practice. <laughs> like, has, has there been a, a bigger collection of three guys that look like little league softball coaches who have been indicted? <laughs> and let's not forget the bounty on Scott Summers. Bone Crusher said he put a bounty on Scott Summers and he was gonna collect it for himself. Okay, so hold on. Oh my God. Oh my God, I hate everyone involved in this match. Dirty Dan put out a bounty on Scott Summers but then claims that he's gonna collect it himself. So what was the point of the bounty? Just keep your money, bro. <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you mean? Does he understand that he can just, it's wrestling and he can just attack Scott Summers and it doesn't have to be a reason other than he doesn't like him? It doesn't have to be a financial reason. I'm going to pay myself to attack you. I just barely got time to get out of there before he's crammed up in the corner. It's Look how floppy that second rope is. It's like they just like someone went underneath the ring with a roll of duct tape and was just like, you know, taping the posts together crossways to try to get him back up. Hey, guys, your show's not good. It's not, it's not worth all this. It's not worth putting people in this kind of danger. Or maybe it is. What do I know? I guess if you didn't, if you didn't, then we wouldn't be here talking about it. So thank you. Thank you for your service, World Wrestling Empire. Thank you for risking your life and the lives of the fans in the front row, both of them. Double whip off the ropes. We'll see if the ring stands it. I like that the story of this match is less about the feud and less about the tag titles and more about, like, is the ring... Fans, will the wrestling ring hold together through one more match? Please. We have a deposit on the building that we will not get back if we don't film the whole show tonight. So please hold together. So they've been circling so long that I'm growing concerned that they're trying to start a whirlpool. Harmon Viper has taken over those duties, and at this point, based on what has been indicated... Oh, buddy, come on. <laughs> come on with those flexes. I don't believe you. <laughs> what was that? That's like little kid just got out of the shower and is standing, like, in front of the mirror. <laughs> like little flexies. <laughs> ...because he has more Greco-Roman and amateur-style wrestling experience than Bone Crusher. 
Both men able to get to their feet. Bone Crusher obviously ready for whatever Scott Summers has to dish out. Those are two very intelligent athletes in that ring right now, sizing each other up. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm going to try my best to get through this. But I just have to say that individually, the Texas Outlaws and Tennessee Rebel and Scott Summers, when they're in separate segments, bring me down so much. Like it's. They're such a bummer to watch. They're such a bummer to have to suffer through. I guess it's a good thing to have them all in one segment and get it over with, but like I'm trying very hard to not turn this whole segment of the episode into just being like, I hate this. I wish that this match never happened. I wish that the world never was invented. He can exert. Nice side takeover. It's a pretty shrewd strategy to pop a guy in a headlock and just flip him over into his own corner. That's that's not something we see very often. It makes me wonder why everyone doesn't do that. If I were to make a pie chart of what we've seen so far, it would basically look like this. We have seen we've seen walking in a circle and we've seen lockups. And that little tiny sliver there, that little tiny sliver you can see on the graph is what's left of my will to live. Tennessee Rebel comes in with the elbow to the shoulder. Now torques it down with the wrist lock and he's got the bone crusher on his fit, on his knees. Bone crusher attempts to rise, but the Tennessee Rebel torques it on down, really putting a lot of pressure on that shoulder. I disagree. I fundamentally disagree with Tennessee Rebel's pants. Tennessee Rebel looks like he's a horse girl. <laughs> is that okay to say? Press is to keep the outlaws in the middle of the mat and the mat wrestling. Keep them off them ropes. Keep them out of the outlaws' corner. And that strategy: tag your partner, punch the other guy, send him flying into his own partner, and just hope he doesn't tag. That's why they're the champions, man. He didn't tag. Maybe he was afraid. That's what separates just regular contenders from champions. Things that make no sense whatsoever, but happen consistently week to week and nobody ever points it out. Is, is there anyone in the back who could pull the Texas Outlaws aside and be like, like TJ Steele, Running Wolf. I mean, there are, there, are, there are a few wrestlers on this show who could pull these guys aside and be like, hey, what you're doing is the worst thing I've ever seen. Maybe wrestling's not for you, bud. Maybe there's no hope for you. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should just, maybe you should stick to just being racist and offensive at home and not on television. Men have so much animosity toward each other. <laughs> oh, and Dirty Dan goes outside the ring. To Dirty Dan. Okay, here I finally figured out. I kind of regular Dan, <laughs> regular Dan. I finally figured out regular Dan. Regular Dan is if AI became a human wrestler, right? AI can take all the information from art and whatever else and put it together. But every time we, every time you spit something out of AI, it's messed up and doesn't quite like you get what it's going for, but it's not quite right. Like it doesn't add up. That's what regular Dan is. He has seen wrestling. He knows what it is. He's trying to do what he's seen, but there's some sort of block. Like he hasn't been, uh, the, the coding that they've given him doesn't quite allow him to process things like a human would. <laughs> That's why we see moves like that. Beautiful, beautiful maneuvers like that. Devastating. It strains credulity to watch how many times he could have tagged his partner and didn't. And listen, I'm not like, I don't think I'm one of these stickler old school guys who's like, ah, back in my day. But oh my God, it's just insulting. Like even fans who aren't watching this from an analytical perspective would be like, why didn't he tag his buddy? Like tag your dude, man. What are you doing? That's the exact leg drop that I use to almost defeat my neighbor, Justin, in 1992 when we were battling it out for this the cardboard championship belt that we'd made for, for our neighborhood. Oh, I don't know how you ever managed that. Right now, it looks like the Texas Outlaws are managing the Southern Express. Oh, there's the tag, and Scott Summers cuts in fresh and goes after Bone Crusher, Bobby Burns. <laughs> he very clearly, listen, I know I'm falling for it, but he very clearly tagged his partner in front of the referee, but it wasn't supposed to happen, so we have to pretend like it didn't. I'm sorry, but that's on the wrestlers. You have to ask. You have to let it happen. I'm getting too deep in this. I we got it. We got to get through this. To the ring to make the tag. 
Viper was definitely not liking what he saw right there. He was Tennessee. admonishing McCoy very harshly. Tennessee Rebel a little upset by that call as he circles the ring against the larger man. Hey, you were upset because you had to be put back in the ring because the tag didn't count? How about instead of walking out and circling up with the guy again, 18 minutes into the match, you just turn around and do the tag again? I don't know. Maybe you don't. Maybe there's a very easy. Maybe you can just clothesline your way out of this situation, bud. <laughs> Look at this. Oh. Okay, the Texas Outlaws wrestling style is very similar to how you would wrestle your friends and cousins in your aunt's pool. That's the style that they've gone for and frankly have mastered. Help but believe some of that frustration is born out of the feud going on between Dirty Dan Wilder and the Tennessee Rebel. Of course, that bounty on the head of Scott Summers by the Bone Crusher hasn't helped things any either. Both men now into the middle of the ring, back to a collar and elbow tie-up. I'm just... I'm just not handling any of this very well. This, this has been... The first hour or two of this match weren't too bad, but as we get into the fifth and sixth hour here... It's just like, it feels like when people do those contests where they have to like put their hand on a truck for like four days and if your hand comes off, you lose. But like, well, we've come so far. Like, it's just like we're on like day eight of the hand on a hard body contest and like it would be a shame to waste all that time. Like, we can't just quit now. We've made it like eight days into this match and we've got to see the, the end. But it just feels like my legs are shaking and I'm hungry and I'm sick of peeing in a bottle and I just miss my family and like I'm starting to have visions and like see things that aren't there and I'm having conversations with like the guy from Fight Club or something and like 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 there's like a there's like a there's a goblin telling me to hurt people like this is just torturous these guys want to brawl oh very smooth move by <laughs> whoopsie whoopsie daisy <laughs> i love it when i'm not a great chain wrestler either but i love it when people are bad at it and it's just so exposed and it's just like the phoniest thing ever like whoopsie daisy <laughs> there's a ghost man on hammerlock <laughs> Oh, and, and that right looks back. like a closed fist into the midsection of the Tennessee Rebel. Oh, and a big takedown. I try to be fair on this show, and I will say that's the only move I've ever seen a regular Dan do that looked halfway decent. And I have to think that finally, after the one actual move that's happened in the whole match, we finally, finally, finally reached the conclusion. <sighs> Is injuring his tag team partner. Now he goes for the pin. Two count... If when you die, your life does truly flash and replay before your eyes, I will look back at the time I spent watching this match and be filled with nothing but regret for what could have been, what I could have done. I could have helped somebody. I could have rescued an animal. I could have spent some time with my wife and children. I could have, I could have, I could have stared and watched paint dry on the wall. I could have watched the grass grow in my yard. I could have watched, uh, I could have watched... The, the, the ocean slowly erode the rocks. In the time I wasted watching this match, I could have warmed up and eaten like three burritos. He's lost in the middle trying to administer a count. With all of the hatred and animosity these men have for each other, we knew it would come to this. Not a wrestling match, but a brawl. And it has come up. All four men in the ring just wailing on each other. Referee Doug McCoy trying to get the action broke apart. Oh, yes. no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, there's a pin somewhere in the middle of that. We didn't see what was going wait on. Wait a minute. So, as we predicted, there's no conclusion to this. They built it up as the final confrontation, and of course it wasn't. But I want to say, because I've had to watch this whole thing, and I unfortunately paid attention, there was a winner, and it was the Texas Outlaws, because Scott Summers was not the legal man. So this whole confusion is absolutely stupid. It would have made sense if the legal guy from both sides pinned the illegal man and then the ref messed up or whatever, like I could see this still doesn't make a lot of sense, but I could kind of see the ref getting confused or maybe the ref should have been knocked down at one point or I don't know, or distracted. 
But this is the most idiotic finish to the longest match in the history of wrestling. I think it still has the Guinness record for biggest waste of time. So second match of the evening that's ended in a non-finish with a fight to the back. Cool. Cool, bro. Sweet. The board of directors for the World Wrestling Empire has approved Flamin' Raymond's defense in place of Renegade against Shane Cortez for the light heavyweight belt here. Now, Raymond, have, do you have any strategy for this match? One thing that managers are noted for is their ability to talk people into the building, to hype up their, their client, to set up a match in such a way that you just have to be there. You have to either tune in, you have to buy a ticket, you have to order the, order the show on, on TV or whatever. And I think we're about to see... Flame and Raymond finally show why he's been so featured on the World Wrestling Empire for so long because of his ability to do exactly that. All it's going to be is I'm going to snap him in half. That's it. You know what? After sitting through 95 minutes of the worst match I've ever seen, I appreciate the brevity. I, I appreciate it. Flame and Raymond still top of the charts. What's the word? Problem with you take it up with the board. Why don't you go to school so you can learn how to see and read? Why don't you go to school so you can learn how to see and read? I definitely remember being taught how to read. I don't remember the classes in kindergarten where they taught me how to use my eyeballs. Apparently, referee Doug McCoy has held up the belts. He's taken them away from the Texas Outlaws. He did not give them to the Southern Express either. I just got to say from just like a kayfabe standpoint, I disagree with the decision. Like there's a double finish. There's a weird unresolved finish why would you take the belts away from the from the tag champions then I, they would just keep them right like i have to assume as we go into this kind of weekly story that we've been following uh here on the show i feel like we're probably going into something where the texas outlaws are going to lose these belts but didn't want to really lose them if i had to guess about what's happening backstage here given that i've wrestled people like the texas outlaws probably a hundred times in my in my wrestling career i would assume that they weren't too crazy about actually losing <laughs> the guy holding back doug mccoy appears to be Newman from Seinfeld. Also, it's a weird thing to have this little tiny Doug McCoy, like he's just going to fight these giant guys. <laughs> hey, Doug McCoy's got that dog in him. Ooh, new shirt. He's got that Doug in him. Ooh. Were they disqualified or was it a double count? What's, what's the verdict here, dog? So the belts are held up. There is no winner. You know, it, it'd be easy to find out who the winner was if we knew who the two legal men in the ring were. Who made the legal pin? I lost him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the high flag, Shane Cortez. We saw it here last week. Cortez came out, thought he was going to have a match against Renegade. Okay, finally, we've had a broken ring. We've had a 45-minute tag team match that went nowhere. We've had unresolved finishes. We have unresolved issues. But finally, it's main event time, right? We've wasted all this time. We've wasted, uh, we've wasted 50 minutes of the broadcast basically doing nothing and setting up things for the future. But now, finally, we get a resolution. We have built this up for weeks. Renegade can't defend his light heavyweight championship. Shane Cortez has earned a match. The board has agreed to let Renegade's manager, Flamin' Raymond, fill in and defend the title. Flamin' Raymond's been training. He's done everything necessary to defend that title successfully. And we're finally, finally, we're going to see Shane Cortez get his hands on Flamin' Raymond. And what I can no doubt believe will be the sleeper match of the evening. I think given the enormity of this match and given the, the fact that it's been built up so much, like, and given the fact that the action this week has been kind of unresolved, I think the only thing to do appropriately is to lay out and just play this main event in its entirety, bell to bell, and we can just talk about it on the other side. Cortez, the crowd is Balls going the crazy, bell. and there's the bell! Shane, small package. Small package. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know what? 
You know what? I can't even <laughs> I can't even be mad about it. We've been through so much. This episode, that match in the middle was essentially taking the ring to Mordor, right? Like my lips are dry and cracked, my feet are sore. I'm so far from the Shire, I don't even have hope anymore. I'm just hoping that the Eagles will come and pick me up. Not those Eagles. I'm hoping that the Eagles will come pick me up and fly me back home. I don't even care. That was like if that was like a four second match. And I'm actually, I'm not even disappointed. Like, I'm actually, that's the best case scenario of what could have happened this evening. Flamin Raymond's acting like his parents wouldn't let him ride a power wheel at Toys R Us. The World Wrestling Empire returns to the Airport Air National Guard Armory for a live TV taping on Saturday, February 4th, 1995. Be there for Devlin Blanchard Fan Depreciation Night. Come to the door, say, I hate Devlin Blanchard, and get in free. That's at the Airport Air National Guard Armory, 4200 North Mingo Valley Expressway. Doors open at 7, bell time is 8 o'clock. Be there. Unbelievable. There was so much beef in that ring with TJ and the Annihilator. He whipped that big 322 pounds across that ring so hard, it broke the cables under the ring that hold the posts in a vertical position. Confirmed. Looks like I know what bad wrestling rings look like when they break. I have a lot of experience, unfortunately. Well, listen, this is what we would call a maintenance show. We have effectively moved the stories Forward into next week, Shane Cortez has come out on top. The tag belts are up in the air. No one knows what's going on. And uh, who knows what Annihilator is going to break next with his ass. Now that's what I call wrestling. Carmelo said your face looks like a clock. 